Firstly, the European Commission, however important, is not the final arbiter of these matters. Mr Barroso's statements do not constitute a ruling, as some have suggested, nor does the Commission even claim to be specifically addressing the particular situation of Scotland. Indeed, the President of the Commission himself made clear in his letter to the House of Lords Committee that the European Commission has expressed its views in general. And I thank the Deputy First Minister for prior sight of her statement. It's a triumph of optimism and evasiveness over hard-headed hard, hard -headed fact and reality because it actually poses far more questions than it answers. Now, she says the process of negotiating Scotland's place in Europe will take just 18 months. How is that possible when the fastest ever process, Finland, took nearly three years? Does she even know? Does, Order. does she even know if she will be granted a meeting with President Barroso? Is Annabel Goldie or anybody else in this chamber seriously saying that Scotland would find itself ejected from the European <laughs> Union? Oil rich, renewable energy rich, fishing rich Scotland. If they are arguing that, then they should stand up and argue it explicitly and they'll be laughed out of the chamber uh, and laughed at right across this country as they will deserve to be. The statement at least answers the question I asked the First Minister earlier on today. Does he expect all the 27 members states to simply sign up to whatever the Scottish Government demands? And the answer seems to be yes, they do. Every single thing. Seems to be that she's got some starry-eyed belief that an independent Scotland would never lose out in any negotiation ever for the rest of time. But back in reality, back in reality, can she answer Patricia Ferguson's question? When does she plan to meet the 27 members of the European Union to establish whether they agree with her claims? Absolutely. Deputy First Minister. I look forward to engaging uh, with other member states. I look forward to engaging with the European Commission. I look forward to engaging, if they will engage with us, with the UK Government uh, on the arguments for Scotland being an independent country, because I think those arguments are not just compelling, I believe they are unanswerable. <laughs> Nicholas Sturgeon ending that report there and we've been joined from Glasgow by Blair Jenkins chief executive of Yes Scotland and Alistair Darling who chairs the Better Together campaign. Blair Jenkins can I talk to you first of all will Scotland have to reapply for EU membership or not? I think the key point in all of this is whether um, the negotiation on Scotland's continued membership happened with Scotland being inside the European Union or having to come out of the European Union and we are very confident that Scotland will be negotiating its terms and conditions as part of the European Union from a position of continuing to be within the European Union. So it's not the automatic, no though, is it? I mean, it's not well, going to be automatic that Scotland will be, an independent Scotland would be a member of the EU. It's a political ra rather than a legal issue. There is no provision in any of the European treaties for the citizens in the territory of Scotland to just stop being part of the European Union. So this will be a political issue, and I think it's inconceivable that those negotiations will take place against any other framework than Scotland being part of the, the EU, continuing to be a uh, part of the European Union. Right. And that's our view. And that, may be, and that may be the case, but do you accept that the SNP has repeatedly said, and certainly implied, that it would be automatic? There would be no case for having to reapply. And now we discover that, in fact, Jose Manuel Barroso has said that a new independent country would have to apply, and it isn't guaranteed. And the SNP have given the impression that it would be guaranteed. Well, Mr Barroso has offered his opinion, and as has been made clear, it won't be his decision, it won't be the European Commission's He's decision. pretty important, though, isn't but he? Indeed, and I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, disagree with that, but the, there, it has always been said that, that there would have to be negotiations, and I think the Scottish Government, although I don't speak for the Scottish Government, have always been clear that there would have to be negotiations, and uh, that, that is the case. Right. Alistair Darling, it seems that Blair Jenkins has admitted there would have to be negotiations, there wouldn't be an automatic entry to the EU, but to take Nicola Sturgeon's point, she's right too. No one's going to block it, are they? Well, look, we've always said that Scotland would have to negotiate its membership on critical issues like the currency, on border controls, passports, or on our rebate. Uh, now, for years, Nicola Sturgeon has said the membership of the European Union would be automatic. She said she had a legal opinion to back that up, which oh. now turns to be complete and utter nonsense. There never was a legal opinion to back that up. And what we're going to get as a result of this is the uncertainty that comes firstly 
in trying to negotiate a breakup of the UK with the rest of the UK, and secondly, the uncertainty that would come through negotiations with the rest of the European Union. As you've just said, Finland, which was a pretty straightforward, uncontroversial uncontro application, that took three years. We know there are some member states who, for their own reasons, will want to make life difficult because of their own internal difficulties. What you've got here is years of uncertainty, which is extremely damaging to businesses and therefore to employment and to jobs in Scotland. And all this because the nationalists sought to mislead people in, in Scotland into believing that nothing would change, it would all be automatic, there was no risk to anything they were proposing. We now see the truth of it. They deceived us as to the legal opinion. We're now in a position where we're throwing ourselves at the mercy of 27 other countries, and nobody actually knows the outcome of that. Right, Blair Jenkins, well, the campaign in the SNP has deceived the electorate and been misleading. I don't think that's the case at all, but I think the question Alistair Darling has to answer as leader of the No well, campaign... Well, first of all, can we just is, answer Alistair? Let's just answer uh -huh. Alistair's accusations, because he's been pretty strong there, and he has said to you that the whole campaign is based no. on deception. Well, as I said, I don't speak for the Scottish Government, but, yes, but I've, you're been, speaking very, for the I've campaign. been very clear. I've been very clear as to what I've been saying along and what they've been saying all along. But I think the question Alistair has to answer is, from the No campaign perspective, is he saying that Scotland would have to leave the EU and then reapply for membership? Is that the official Better Together position, that Scotland will have to leave the European Union and then reapply for membership? Right. Or do they agree with us that Scotland will continue to be part of the European Union and will negotiate from within? Right. Before he answers that question, do you, uh, you know, answer his question about years of uncertainty? None of this is guaranteed. There That's is no... the real problem. It's a no. promise that you've been campaigning on, a promise that you can't yet back up. You may well get what mm. you say, but you can't guarantee it. And that's what's been said to the Scottish electorate. Before, in booklets, the SNP have said, we will remain part of the EU, we will keep sterling, mm. we will keep the opt-outs. Now the argument is, is anyone seriously saying that the EU wouldn't want an independent Scotland as a member? It's a very different argument. There's, there is still nobody seriously around Europe saying that Scotland will not uh, be a member of the European what Union. What about the years of uncertainty? Continue in membership. Well, Alistair mentioned Finland. I mean, another example to look at is East Germany. East Germany, when it reunited with West Germany, joined the European Union overnight. Now, that was on the basis of 40 years of communist dictatorship and East Germany conforming with none of the democratic or social or economic conditions of membership of the EU. I think if a territory of the size of East Germany can overnight become part of the European Union, then the notion that Scotland, with 40 years of uh, participation and membership of the European Union and in accord with all the requirements of the European Union, would find itself in a more difficult position than that is absurd. You, and I think before okay. people in Scotland come to vote in two years' time, I, I don't think anyone credibly in Scotland will be saying that Scotland will not continue <coughs> in membership of the European Union. Alistair Darling, you're scaremongering. Look, the difference between me and uh, Blair's campaign is that I've never argued something that, uh, you know, that is contestable. I've never, I've never argued that Scotland couldn't get into uh, the European Union. What I've always said is there would be, have to be negotiations on key issues like currency, uh, like border control, like our rebate. And if you take just one example, the rebate, it is no secret that the rest of the European Union does not like the fact that the UK has a rebate. They've always been trying to get rid of it. Do you think for one moment that presented with an opportunity to negotiate away at least part of that rebate with the Scottish application, they wouldn't take it? Equally, if you look at the, members of, uh, the, the, the new members of the European Union, they've all had to sign up to the euro. Now, I said earlier that one of the problems the nationalists have got, they've got two policies at the moment. One is we're going to have to negotiate with the European Union, and that might involve the euro. The second is we're going to have a currency union, it seems, with the rest of the UK to keep the pound, even though nobody is proposing to ask what England, Wales and Northern Ireland think about this. How could you join a currency union when you don't know whether or not you've got to join the euro? And my point is that the deceit here is that for years the nationalists have said you don't need to worry about all of this. Now the same people are saying, well, actually, we'll get in overnight. It's a mere, uh, you know, nod and a wink, no problem at all. I don't believe a word these people are saying because I don't believe they have actually done any preparation in relation to this. Yeah. They're flying by the seat of their pants. The fact that Alex Salmond's nowhere to be seen speaks volumes
comes with the fact that the nationalists are all over the place. Blair's a nice chap. He keeps saying he doesn't speak for the nationalists whenever you put a difficult point to him. The problem is that Scotland in less than two years' time is going to have to make the biggest decision that it's ever made. And it looks more and more that we're being sold a one-way ticket to a very deeply uncertain destination. They don't know where they're going, and people will be rightly to be very wary of them. Right. I mean, Blair Jenkins, you can understand why Alistair Darling is saying it looks as if the campaign is flying by the seat of its pants. Why wasn't this preparation done before? Why is Nicola Sturgeon only now writing to Jose Manuel Barroso? Why was legal advice only taken in October? Well, there, there's plenty of time for these things to be clarified, but Alistair but used the word... But you've had 20 Alistair, years Al to sort well, this I, I haven't, I haven't okay. excuse me. But Alistair used the word... Alistair made an important point. He used the word deceit. Um, I think one of the things that the No campaign, and Alistair as leader of it, should do this today, one of the su suggestions they should withdraw is this false assertion that Scotland will be forced to join the Euro. Now, this is completely untrue. Really? There is no way, there is no way in which Scotland can be forced to join the Euro. Alistair knows this, and I would well, call on him uh, to withdraw that assertion, which he knows to be untrue. Right, well, Alistair, darling, what, do you withdraw that assertion? Why are you no, so convinced what, they would what, have to? What I said was that three of the issues that are going to confront Scotland is whether we join the Euro, passport control, border control, and the rebate. Now, actually, no one knows the outcome of these negotiations, least of all uh, the nationalists, and, you know, I dare say Blair Jenkins will tell you he doesn't know, he, he won't know either. All I can tell you is that up until now, everybody who is joining, who's applied to join, the euro is there because it is an article of faith, political faith, amongst the Eurozone, amongst the European Union. It's absolutely central to everything about them. What I'm saying is the uncertainty here because we won't know, and the idea this is going to be sorted overnight, nothing in Europe gets sorted overnight. You can see that now yes, with, the, with the Euro crisis. The idea is completely fanciful. And the reason I use the word deceit, just so you understand it, is remember, Alex Salmond told us there was a legal opinion. Nicola Sturgeon, when she spoke to the Scottish Parliament, said she had a legal opinion. It turns out that's not true. All right, well, so let, we're let, bound let, to take what they, take, what they say now with a very, very large pinch uh, of salt. Right. I mean, why are you so certain, Legends, that you, you wouldn't have to join the Euro or not at least have very, very difficult and long negotiations over not joining it and keeping with Sterling? Well, it's, it's very clear. Um, there's a precondition, which is that you have to be a member of the exchange rate mechanism for at least two years. Now, participation in the exchange rate mechanism is voluntary. So if you do not wish to be part of the Eurozone, you do not require to, to do that, and you do not have to be part of the Euro. It's very clear. And I think uh, there are a number of things being said by Better Together which are misleading. Um, some members of the campaign, not all, talk about border posts and border controls. This is all part of trying to lay roadblocks in the way of the Scottish people to try and prevent debate about what a future Scotland could be and should be. Where I think this debate is going to focus increasingly is on the fact that there is one certainty if we stay within the UK, and that is that we will continue to get governments that we didn't vote for, that uh, 900,000 Scots will continue to live in fuel poverty in one of the most energy-rich uh, nations in the world. So I think those are the issues that will be focusing the minds of Scottish people as they come to look at the independence debate over the next two years. Blair Jenkins, thank you very much uh, from Glasgow and Alistair Darling in Edinburgh, the first, I'm sure, of many debates between, if not the two of you, then others in the campaign.